I have with me today legendary photographer Raghu Rai, who has just been conferred with the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 6th National Photography Awards. Now, today you're looking at decades and decades of experience. Five. Five decades of experience. And these books that have come from your publisher, I find are the most important record of history. That Photo history. Of photo history, but you know, I mean, you look at it, it's, it says more than reams of words, reams of words, because it is interpretive. And I remember when you first started photographing Indira Gandhi, you were her favorite. You used to say, Indra ji, sir, idhar dekhe, Indra ji, sir, udhar dekhe. And she would just pose the way you asked her to. And there's a, that iconic picture uh, of her in the Himalayas when you were getting frustrated and not getting the right picture and she asked you, okay, what happened? Yeah. Uh, why you, you said, thik picture nahi aari. So she said, what do you want me to do? You said, climb up the parapet. And then you climbed, she climbed up this parapet and you got, and you Against got this picture, her silhouette, this one, yeah. this silhouette of her against the mountains. Now, and then she, you could see her evolution. And when she first came to power, tell us about that. Your first, your experiences of when you photographed uh, a life in the day of Indira Gandhi, where you followed her around all the time. That was a different period when yeah. she first came to power. Describe her life, describe her, and describe the way she treated people. That's what people are most interested in. You no, know, I must say her early years, she was more humane and more connected with most of us around her. And as she grew stronger and the opposition took up harder positions, so, so she started becoming a little isolated, a little away from everybody. I guess the reason was that being Pandit Nehru's daughter and Pandit Nehru being, I must say, a visionary of some kind, and a lover boy, and the guy who loved his country, people and politicians must have used, misused that closeness. So she was very, very aware of the fact that she has to keep a little distance. And then that distance started growing bigger. No, you see, like you were saying, I, I will say, Indraji, look here, Indraji, look there. No, we never said that. But what we did say was, Indraji, your security is not letting us do the job well. And she'll give them a look and they'll walk away or she'll tell them to stay away and things like that. She cared. And that was something very important for us. So she had respect for the fact that you had a job to do, hmm. which is lacking today. Absolutely. Like photographers see, the, the and journalists are kicked around. Was that Panditji also as I was told, had great respect, you know. They used to be a very senior photographer. We, we, we would call him Chacha. Chacha. So that Chacha Jutha was a little crazy guy, very old, very fragile. So once Pandit Nehru was returning from America and the arrival picture was stepping down the ladder, mm. very strictly, nothing else. So by the time he came to the spot at the airport, Panditji had come down, just the last step he had stepped down. So he said, Panditji, my photo miss ho gai. Panditji, you will go up again. He got so angry, Panditji, he ran after him to hit him. No way. Honestly, because Physical. he was so human. Arre, he was an amazing guy. I loved it. And then, he, of course, he ran away and he says, come here. So he comes closer and he goes up and comes down again, <laughs> Panditji. <laughs> So there was almost a camaraderie ah, between politicians bilkul. and And they journalists. cared for the photographers and journalists and there was certain amount of mutual respect for each other and their profession. And also the journalists, the photographers, they would do things which are meaningful and respectable. Today they pick up anything from anywhere and they print it, they exaggerate, they tell lies 
anything is happening today. So, so it's, it's, a, a, it's a, we damaged our own credibility. Absolutely damaged. And because of that, treated in different Damaged and diluted. And uh, I think the press is as so has same kind of corruption going in their system and in their way of handling news stories, which is everywhere. You know. Absolutely. I, I remember a time even as recently as uh, during the 90s, during Ayodhya, uh, I remember going to Advani's house. You could walk into his house. Lots of journalists and photographers there. You could open his fridge, help yourself to water. His wife was always very, very hospitable. Same thing with Manmohan. There was no security. Manmohan Singh, before he became Prime Minister, you could walk in, relax, they'd give you Nimbu Pani. Everybody, I mean, everyone was treated mm. equally. Indira Gandhi, when I was doing, you know, my day, life, a day in the life of Indira Gandhi, they used to serve lychee juice. That was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Raghu, that uh, picture of... Indira Gandhi, Gandhi against the Himalayas, you were saying? Yeah. You see, Indira Gandhi once in her interview said that she loves the Himalayas. And even Panditji Nehru used to go to Himalayas for a holiday, take them along. So she, this point, uh, when I was doing a day in the life of Indira Gandhi, and uh, she was generous enough to give me the whole day from early morning to late evening. And then, you know, I talked about this statement. She says, yeah, if that happens, ever happens. So when... Um, Which statement? She loved the Himalayas. Yeah, she said in her will that I'm a daughter of the Himalayas. Achha. So, you know, when um, Prime Minister Bhutto was coming for a Simla agreement, I sent her a note saying that, Indraji, you say you love the Himalayas. Now is the time if you can give me a few minutes to photograph you. So between the meetings, she was kind enough. One afternoon, she gave me about almost one hour where I wanted to photograph her. So, you know, the lawns where she was staying in that British, uh, old British architectural, you know, cottage, there was a parapet wall. Now, there you could see the Himalayas, you could see the dark clouds, everything. But the parapet was about three feet high. So when she was walking on the lawns, half of her body will get hidden. So I took a few pictures and then I stopped. She said, what happened? I said, I'm not getting the right picture. She said, so what do you want me to do? I said, Indraj, if you can climb the parapet. So first she looked at me and laughed. She said, how will I do that? I said, right away. So we got a chair. She went up the chair, I held her hand, she went on the parapet. But don't forget that parapets in, in the mountains are... Very wide. Very wide. And so she stepped up and she started walking. But what is so interesting in this photograph, apart from the fact that nature had those clouds for me and the Himalayas and a bit of, you know, the trees and everything, that Indraji was so particular about her gesture, about her posture. And so she's walking and her hand is in a mudra. You know, it's mm. not just that she's walking like this. So she was very aware of how she was being photographed. So that did the magic for me. And, and plus those were the years when the excess was unlimited there was no terrorism, there was no threat to the lives of any of these leaders. So you could go as close as four feet, five feet from them. So Naveen Nagar has asked the question, which Prime Minister was most conscious about how he would appear in photographs and who was the most natural? They say Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, but I'll say Indira Gandhi because I haven't photographed Panditji. But also like in Congress session. Hmm? During Congress session, you have 15, 20 photographers from, you know, different newspapers, magazines, and even foreign press sitting there. And I used to watch Indira Gandhi being the president and the prime minister, Congress president, that she was so well aware of who was photographing from which angle. And I remember a day in the life, you know, at about 5.36 in the evening, she says, Raghudai, now, you know, my, I'm going to have only a few dull, boring meetings. So you don't have to sit here. Why don't you come home at about 7.30? We'll do the last bit there. So I said, all right. So I 
went there at 7.30 and the reception said, yes, you go in and my camera bag is hanging, I am, my camera is hanging here. I walk in like a silly fellow and through the corridor, what do I see? Indira Gandhi by the time was so exhausted, she was holding on to the door and hanging like this. Almost, she was tired. So her hands on the door and standing like this. Why was she hanging on the door? Why didn't she, she sit down or no, lie down? And oh, the she knew you were coming, so she was posing. No! Achha. The moment I saw that, I picked up my camera and suddenly she realized okay. and my picture was gone. Oh! <laughs> now, in all, tell me, I'm really interested in how you photographed her during the emergency. Did you have access to her during the emergency? Or did it stop? No, first few months, no access at all. She stopped all access? Yes, she was, absolutely. All right. She didn't want to meet the Did press. you photograph uh, Jama Masjid when the demolitions took place? Uh, yes, I have photographed everything else and also other symbolic moments where you could see the tension and the police everywhere or uh, people being lati tied over little, little matters. We did that. But you see, the thing is, the whole country went quiet. That's the point. Yeah. People of this generation imagine that every day people were out on the streets no, protesting. No, nothing at all. Nothing. 90% of, 99.9% .9 of the people were quiet. They appreciated the efficiency. They l supported Indira Gandhi. Or ab sub pretend karte hai ke, you know, we fought for the freedom. No. A handful did hmm. who went to jail, yeah. journalists and politicians or opposition leaders. But the rest of the country, the general public, please describe the situation for no, our I, millennial I watchers right now. I would say right that everybody supported the emergency. But the fact was initially there were some good moments where governance became important and they took some important steps. Trains were running on time. People were going to the offices on time. Corruption was down. Co corruption was down. But then there were few other things like com forcible uh, sterilizations and also demolitions where people hated it that she, they can do anything and get away. But you with couldn't it. report it. That was done through rumour. Yeah, you rumor. couldn't report it. But so did you get people. any pictures of that? Did you get any pictures of the forced vasectomy situation? No, where not. Any interviews? None of that. You got the demolitions of Jama Demolitions, Lati charge on ordinary situations when people got together. Even Bahad before the meeting, it was tha. But the fact was also, you know, there was also time, you know, that if we had a good picture and we couldn't use it, so we left the space Empty, blank, you know. Yeah. In the newspaper. So did you photograph Sanjay Gandhi? I don't see any pictures of him. Very little, because I was not fond of him. So if you don't but have a also connection with the was, person? He was a kind of brat, you know, who had no sensitivity about press, about anything, you know. I thought he was just a young man, happens to be the son of a prime minister, who doesn't have much to say. So he didn't, you know, make a difference to my life. Though he was the man behind because of uh, some, some of those, uh, you know, congressmen who were the, whatever, they, they formed a group of those four people, five people. Hmm. So, it, so you lost interest in photographing the architect of the emergency? <laughs> no, I won't say he was the architect. These guys, you know, Bansi Lal and Siddharth Shankar Re, and who were other two, they were the architects. And he was the boy who passed on the message to Indira Gandhi that you should be doing this. He was not the architect. Please don't give him such a big credit. Raghu, he was the one who goaded her into doing this, to put all these restrictions on the press. Aap mat <clears throat> Indira Gandhi being Nehru's daughter, brought up in such great love and affection and security huh? and everything else around her being Prime Minister's daughter was so wonderful. And when uh, why emergency was declared because the opposition, Ra Raj Narayan and all these people, they took her to court uh, this, that her election was going to be uh, declared null and void. It was declared null and void. It was. Mm -hmm. So she was pushed against the wall. And suddenly, Sanjay, with the help of these congressmen, comes up with the idea 
what happens in a woman's life. She finds a man in her family who can save take her. care of, save her. So don't think that it was Sanjay, Sanjay, Sanjay all the way. It was with the help of these guys, but a member of your own family, a male member, who suddenly come to your support and it has worked overnight. The whole nation was quiet. The whole nation was quiet, but it was Sanjay Gandhi who was responsible for the vasectomy drives. He was responsible for the demolition drives. He was responsible for no. his 20-point no, program, no. which was actually a really good program. No. Each he one, teach not. one. He was advised to take these steps. Don't say it was his vision and his idea in 20, uh, uh, you know, those program. Uh, that, was, that was not his idea and his vision. I think it was, but we'll leave it at that. You mm. think it wasn't, I think it was. Huh. Let's move at the next step where you did photograph Jay Prakash Narayan. Hmm. And there was a movement in the country against the emergency. What was your impression of Jay Prakash Narayan photographing him? Now this was historic. Yeah. That here you're seeing the play of history where the emergency has taken place and there's a whole country that's now risen up to fight against it. But ek baat aap ko batam, everything starts on very human, personal level. Like I said, Indira Gandhi found a man in her family suddenly who came to her rescue. Similarly, Jai Prakash Narayan was Nehru's contemporary, almost like Sanjay's Chacha. Okay? And Indira Gandhi, when he started supporting Yuva Mukti Morcha and other people, youth movement, Indra Gandhi made some very rough statements about Jaiprakash Narayan. And he thought, Ki main iske baap ka contemporary. How can she talk like this about me? And he took a position. Some personal level se shuru hoti hai zindagi. <laughs> Let me tell you. Hmm. And he mobilized people and people were also ready. They needed a change. Also people were fed up of all kinds of um uh, you know, restrictions, the, uh, the arrests, the, what was happening in the press. Yeah. A lot of people were being sent to jail on vendettas. Not a lot, a few people. A were few sent. people, yeah. Kuldeep Nair, Virendra yeah. Kapoor, Arun Jetli, yeah. <laughs> all these people. A few people were few sent people. to jail. Yeah. Um, but the majority of the country was not really affected and they affected, supported it. But compulsion, this compulsory sterilizations, family planning, demolitions, and these messages were very harsh on people and they instinctively hated it, instinctively. But tell us your experience about photographing Jai Prakash Narayan. So Jai Prakash Narayan, and by the day he was gaining popularity and support, first from Bihar and Gujarat and then all over the country. And in any case, people like uh, Jagji Madram, Y.B. Chavan, stalwarts of Congress, they didn't have the guts to get up on their own against Indira Gandhi. And when JP spoke up, these guys found somebody they can ally, you know, they can, um, you know, work with. And this is how he gained strength. And, and I remember the day when he took out the procession, when the Lati charge happened on him on 4th of November, I think. Uh, I went to his house. Early in the morning, there were four or five supporters in his house and a jeep standing outside, no one there. And then, you know, they said they'll start at 10, 10, 10.30, 11, hardly anybody. What kind of procession is he going to take? But then he felt, my God, if I don't take up, go out, People will think, you know, that I have uh, got scared. So he starts off on a, this jeep with a, a boy who's driving for him and three other supporters. And I asked JP Saab, I said, can I sit next to the driver? Because he was sitting on the front row and I wanted to have his face also in every picture. So we start from, uh, it was what, which Kuwa, his, his locality in Patna in a small street. His jeep starts moving. 
there is hardly anybody. And then people from the windows, they are waving at him. And then as we are going along, you know, few boys came in and joined hands. They started following him. Then few more and few more and then few hundred and few thou thousands. It became like this. And then he discovered hundreds of people were following him. So he turns back to the, uh, one of the youth leader. He says, Bhuvala Nara Lagao. So he said, Delhi Rani Janta Kiske hai. And then they started and as they traveled towards, uh, you know, where the, where the government offices were, that was quite a few kilometers. By that time, thousands of people had, were, you know, following him. And the police also was told not to take action unless something big happens. By the time it went totally out of control. But when they were nearing the CM's office, then they decided to do a lati charge. And that's where, but uh, he was not hit by any, any, any lati, but certainly... But it looks like it in the yeah, photograph. Yeah, in my photograph, in your photograph it looks, it looks, like, looks like... Because some, yeah. uh, one BSF chap is about to hit, hit him, him and he's under the lati. Hmm. But, but he, by so the time... So what did he do? Did this and then did... Oh, sorry. No, he did this, but somebody also protected him, okay. another policeman. And then by the time they stopped them completely, you can't go any further. So he almost sat down and almost exhausted and finished, let me tell you. And by that time, everybody collected around him, thousands of people. And the day was over. And next day, we carried that picture in the States from newspaper, BSF guy with the lati on him. And then um, the Home Minister had to apologize in the Parliament because they threw the statesman that you are telling a lie. Look at the picture here. And, and, but, but then he became a reluctant leader. And nowhere did I see that he was so powerfully there and in control. It was just somehow getting pushed into doing it. This is my deed. Well, he wasn't very young. He was old. No, that, and that not was a, well. no, no, but he, no, 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 but he was a gentle, mild kind of mm. a person. Not into politics and into fights also to make there a difference. Was, uh, Raghu, would you say there was a certain apathy of the Indian public? Because when he was arrested by Indira Gandhi and he said when they arrested him that Tum dekhna, main arrest honge, to the desh will go up in flames, people will be out on the streets, sub protest chalenge pure desh mein. And then afterwards, then the next day, they put him in the car hmm. and they drove him around and said, Dekho, batao, ke kahan hai what you were saying. Sab ghar mein apna sab kaam waise tha jaise chal raha hai. Toh bharat desh mein aisa hi hoga. Aisa hi chal raha hai. This is how this country runs. People did not care enough to come out on the streets. They let him go to jail. And chup chap sab ghar mein baithe thai aur kaam kar rahe thai jo karna tha. There was a great apathy of sticking your neck out. Nobody was, very few people were brave enough. Only the opposition and journalists did it. The rest, look at the judiciary. They all lay down. Yeah, everybody, everybody. So, now I'll take some questions from uh, people have asked you. Um, there is, Ayush Jain has asked, which Prime Minister is more energetic and aggressive in election campaigning and implementing policies outside and inside Parliament, Indira Gandhi or Narendra Modi? I must say, Indira Gandhi, if I look back, we stood against her during emergency, but if I look back, at her record, she cared for art, culture, heritage, and much more than any other Prime Minister has done so far. Mm -hmm. And then there was a huge gap. And then comes Narendra Modi. Narendra Modi, in his election campaign, he said a couplet that took away my heart. Not only my heart, the heart of most Hindustanis. And I thought that couplet will convert into a national song. Which one was that? And that is Na khata hu na khane dunga Par wo na abhi tak pura gana bana hai Na uske pure sur jage hai That's what, let me tell you That when he spoke in the parliament the first day At least I loved it, I thought it was wonderful His speech, his concern, everything But 
looking at the things, the way the governance is happening, you know, I don't see much change. Some people say Modi wants to do it, but the other, you know, RSS and other sections, they don't let him do this. I say, in any case, at the end of the day, the Prime Minister is the boss and he should make a difference. I'll also say that Modi has been a great orator. He's made a big difference. He's won first election and several other state elections also. But his promises have yet to be fulfilled. And if he fails, if Modi fails, let me tell you, we are in trouble for another 10, 15, 20 years. But he's the first Prime Minister who ever, in his speech at the Red Fort, brought up the issue of uh, attacks on girls and told parents to question their boys more than the yeah. girls. He's the first Prime Minister who brought it up to ap say, ap ap se pucho. Very brave of him yeah. to, to come from the. Uh, to no, even go Swatch against. Bharat is a great and I was idea. coming to that. Yeah. Who on earth. Yeah. Now nobody dealt with the issue of. of uh, which in other countries were a butt of jokes that for them uh, toilets are a national issue. But they, it is a national issue. He's the first one who made it. Yeah, absolutely. To into a national issue which it, it touches on so many things, not only hygiene, health, social mores, uh, rape, all the kind of things that women in villages have to face because they don't have an indoor toilet in their home. Yeah. So you, we have to hand him that. Now I go to another question uh, from a viewer. But have Ma you, Man Mohan Man Man Singh was a non-performing prime minister. What was he like to photograph? I have photographed him a few times. Like photographing a cupboard? Like not a puppet, like a model of some kind that stands for I don't know what. I have a always mannequin. photographed him. A mannequin, a statue. Yeah. I have always photographed him sandwiched between the Gandhi's. Gandhi family or in posters of Gandhi's and Nehru's. I have never photographed him independently because he's never stood like a man of his own kind. You know? And uh, uh, Rohit Bansal has asked, uh, has, uh, ha have you photographed Narendra Modi? If so, could you share? I, mean, I know I've seen pictures that you have done. So give us your experience and what does it feel like to photograph Narendra Modi? You see, there, there is one basic problem in today's photojournalism, especially photographing the Prime Minister or even the Ministers. Because of security reasons, the distance is so much. And in photography we say, if you are not close enough, your picture is not good enough. So, you know, taking pictures with a big telephoto, 50 feet away, 60 feet away, you know, doesn't give you the same closeness and power of expression and the body language, you know, that we used to get. I mean, photographing Indira Gandhi from five feet, six feet, any security guy will come closer, will say, Indira ji, dekhi. And she will tell them to leave the place. And you could get as close as you wanted. And that's why, you know, one has got some very close, intimate photographs of... But Narendra Modi's body language, his speech making style, his uh, connection with people when he goes into a crowd. It's, I would say, magic for a photographer because he really plays. Yeah. He knows yeah. that. But, but you are not allowed to get that close to capture that magical moment, you know. Somebody suggested to me, why don't I do a book on Mr. Modi? I said, will I have that freedom and access? They say even he doesn't have it. Because of security reasons. No, but you could ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one could ask. But, uh, but you know, it's a very, very difficult thing to do, you know. In today's world, ridden with um, security problems and terrorism, you know. Uh, Siddharth Jain is asking, which photograph do you cherish the most? And what is your take on mobiles with inbuilt camera features? Mobiles and inbuilt cameras are fun. Because that is a disease 
that is catching up with anybody and everybody. So everybody is becoming a photographer of some kind, which is fun thing. So, but you've done a book using... Yes, I have done a book with a cell phone also. Because Which is beautiful. Yeah, because you see, cell phone has a fixed lens, which is a wide angle lens. Now, people doing selfies from this close quarter with a wide angle distorts your face, your nose, your everything. But because they are fun photographs, so everybody laughs it off. But you see, in my case, when I was doing a book on India with a cell phone, A, I was being paid good amount of money for it. So I made sure that what are the limitations of this camera inside this cell phone. The limitation is it's a fixed lens. The limitation is the quality of the picture. So you have to use proper light, shoot in proper light. So I took care of these aspects and I went to the most favorite places of mine and I did the right kind of exposure, chose the right moment. So I did it with lots of pre professional efficiency. Hmm. And that's why it turned out to be good Fantastic. quality, yeah. special moments. But normally it's a bad show, you know, using this. Your first question was? Uh, this about uh, what My you think? My best picture. Yeah. No, Which you photograph see, do you cherish the most? I, uh, You see, I am a product. It's like asking which is your favorite child. No, it, so I'll put it in another way. I am a product of big and small, little and not so little and wonderful, great, mad moments. I'm a product of all those. And that today, when I look back, every moment of all kinds of intensity has its own relevance in the life of any creative person. So this is not the most important one and the, the least important one. Everything matters in life. This is how I'll say. Now, one of my questions, I'll wait for the, with the others. Um, I remember when you were working in India today, you got pictures of the exodus of Punjab, where during the Khalistan movement, there was almost like scenes of the partition where people had piled up all their belongings and were leaving Punjab and you had amazing pictures. And uh, Arun did not want to publish them, saying that is ethically irresponsible, it's anti-national, it'll create a bigger exodus from Punjab, it'll create panic, and he did not want to publish it. So there was a lot of argument shouting going on, on whether they should be published or not. Now, what is your view on that? Should... No, you see, the most important aspect in any journalist photographer's life is not being nationalist. There is something called the instinctive truth. And that instinctive truth is more important than your religion, than your country. If you are not instinctively honest to the situations as they reveal their truth, then you are playing some kind of a biased game. Whether it's because you are being nationalistic or you are being a supporter of this political party or that political party. You know, when I did that photograph of Mrs. Gandhi losing, you know, in the last general election after emergency, somebody asked me this question that she gave you Padma Shri, you were the first photographer to have got a Padma Shri and you were given such access everywhere. And where is your loyalty? Let me tell you, loyal, who's a loyal person? Who is loyal? Kutte loyal hote hain. Because the, if your master feeds you, then they become loyal to you. Insan, his loyalty and creative people's loyalty is to capturing the truth of the situation as it gets revealed in that moment. And even nationalism for me comes later. If I don't have respect for human instinct and human value, I cannot be a great Indian or a great nationalist. So were those pictures published? Did Arun publish them? No, they didn't, but it didn't matter because it was not also such an exodus. It was few people were scared and they wanted to move away. And it was not a huge thing happening, like the Bang Bangladesh refugees, where millions of them were turning into India. That was totally different. So talking about the Bangladesh, you covered the 1971 war. Yeah. And in that uh, 
were there issues where you felt that pictures would that you took could damage uh, nationalism no why nationalism we were uh, you know uh, facing the brunt of it all you know that millions of refugees were turning uh, coming into india and that was a you know big burden on indian economy and that's why you know the the government of india wanted the world to know what was going on and nobody believed because pakistan's propaganda was much better and the propaganda they were doing people believed them and not us till i went to the world capitals with my big exhibition on refugees on india and where new york times or the zeit and all these big newspapers they gave me one full page every newspaper and then they realized and that's the time they thought a photographer can make so much difference and they gave padma shri to a photographer you know but in that also that was a political situation ragu in that uh, many people had the view that why uh, how does india interfere and uh, divide and uh, create another country that happened later no no first it was let me tell you that pakistan was treating bangladeshis the east pakistan as their colony and behaving exactly the same way as an outsider ruler will behave in another country and that's why they went up in in revolt against them and sheikh mujibur rahman took up the struggle hmm. so in, in india did not interfere but indira gandhi was shrewd enough when she discovered she's got 10 million refugees at her hand why shouldn't she use use the situation and they needed our help now you've spoken about your relationship with brindan wale hmm. and you covered operation blue star and that again was a political highly charged political situation yes first can you tell us about your relationship with brindan wale and once you used to call him paaji paaji and once henchman came to yeah. you and told him stop calling him paaji now call him santhi he's not your brother <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's not your brother what santhi ji hai i said why are you troubled you know when i call him paaji he likes it he says no you will not do this anyway that was just a small thing you know that happened but your relationship time. with him was interesting huh yeah interesting in the sense that by by saying let me tell you i am if i am an affectionate guy <laughs> i can get into you know people's that. heart very easily when i want to so you know i'll literally you know get get into him and say come on paaji let's do this you know let's do that and he'll sit down and he'll laugh and he'll uh, i could see little uneasiness also but i could see la that he was laughing and he was also willing to do it for a photograph so i used to use all this you know and even the last picture that i took of bindan wale was inside a kal takht and he was sitting there all by himself his eyes red with anger and fear fear so much fear that you don't know you've got no idea he was coward you know he used to initially when the villagers will come to meet him santhi ji santhi ji they will throw 2 rupees 1 rupee 5 rupees at his feet and when they'll go away he'll pick up all those rupees and put it in his pocket you know santhi ji so did you get a picture Are of that now now you have huh? did you get a picture of him no, picking I up the money no i didn't do that i thought you know that was demeaning the man in any case you know but that's the truth it's the instinctive that truth that is the truth but at that time i felt are yaar chhod no no instinct of truth ah, should have been there ah, yeah there. you should have got it no but listen to this and he was though he was getting whatever you know sending his men to kill so and so so and so he was like like uh, our great friend from bombay shiv sena ka thakre thakre he sat in his own little fort inside his uh, house and he used other people to go to the dirty work uh, to do the dirty work so was bindan wale doing that and in any case all this happens with the political support of the bosses let me tell you otherwise they'll be chuhas chuhas and once we we had gone to bhivandi when there were uh, you know uh, communal riots many many years ago during indira gandhi's time so we asked the 
the DSP, SP in charge of that area, how did it start? That was initial years of, you know, all these kind of riots happening. He says, sir, let's tell you something very clearly. If the bosses don't want it, it shall not happen. Kail Khatam. And that's the way the pattern has been set all over the country, everywhere, for anybody and everybody who can use it. So you're saying that riots always started politically? Riots and this kind of uh, uh, social, political, religious divisions are created by these guys for their benefits. Everybody knows that, you know. Uh, did I ask you this question from Indu Malhotra? What do you think about award wapsi and social and political situation of India? You see, one thing more than award wapsi, I like to say something else. That today, say BJP, like BJP is in power, you bring out some uneasy point and ask any of the BJP leaders, why do you do this or this shouldn't be done. Two things will happen. First, they will think you are anti-us. Second thing, they will think you are a congressman. And if you ask any congressman an easy question, they will think you are a BJP guy. I fail to understand that we, the journalists, and if we have any standing and honesty, sorry, BJP, Congress, CPM, Mulayam Singh, so and so, so and so, they don't mean anything to us. Exactly. We ask in context to what they are doing to the country and, and to the people. But each time you ask this question so or you return, lost. Yeah, you return a award and they think, they ye Congress ka hai. Agar BJP ke time, ke time pe karo to Congress hai, agar Congress ke time pe karo to BJP hai. Actually, jab ye award wapis kiya tha, the objection that they were making was not to the BJP, it was to the uh, Sangeet. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and they were the not academy. awarded not sorry, during the, BJP time. To the <laughs> academy. They were yeah. objecting to the academy that you should object to these murders yeah. of writers. Yeah. And they were not objecting to the BJP. BJP had to up, grab the thing and, and made it into an intolerance issue when it wasn't directed to them. So it was a misfire Absolutely. which they didn't have to pick no, up. Even, even what happened in Delhi, uh, in JNU. If yeah. I were the Prime Minister, I'll go to JNU, sit with the boys and say, Aye. At least the home minister or the education oh, any, minister could have sat with them. No, no. But they, Why I'm saying stoked. Modi? Because Modi is so vocal and so open. He could have won them over. And he could have won them over, you know, without any problem. And now you've created such a gap between them and you. Why that? Now, this is from uh, Raj Lalwani. How hmm. important is it? for the photographers and journalists, storytellers of today mm. to look back and be aware of and study what's been done in the past. I ask especially because it is often difficult to access archives in our country. Most of Kishore Parikh's legendary photojournalism, journal journalistic work for Hindustan Times is barely accessible, for instance. Especially in today's scenario, shouldn't the photo archives of India today the ground reporting of news track, the literary writing of gentlemen, be made accessible and compulsory reading for younger journalists to know what journalism actually can be. Chalo, so these are two points. First of all, the archives. It's not only, India today is what, 30, 40 years old now? Hmm. Anand Vazar Patrika, Statesman. Times of India. Times of India. Maybe Times of India has some archives, other newspapers, their archives were burnt or lost. Or you forget about that. 1947 onwards, uh, photo division of India, where they had so many photographers. Sub Sub, all the best negatives have disappeared. Plus, unlike the British, we do not respect our heritage, who we were. And we don't res have any respect for our archives. And this is the way it happens in this country and there is no one to take care of that aspect which is very unfortunate. You know when Jayalalita passed away, I called up my niece Kali and I told her, I said listen, I did an interview with Jayalalita for the pilot of News Track. It is the only interview where she's talked in such personal terms about MGR and how she became Chief Minister, how it was snatched away from her, then she became Chief Minister. They could not find it. Because and there was one petty 
fellow who used to work there who had a panga against Madhu Treyan, ke sab news track ke tips destroy kar do. So they, they haven't destroyed all of them, but certainly that one got destroyed because they could not find it. And what a loss, what because a loss. it's archival material where she Absolutely. spoke in a way where, mm, which she hasn't spoken before. Now, you know, talking about archives, and especially in creativity, in writing, in painting, in photography, in music, call it a responsibility or a liability. You've got to know where we are coming from, where we are going. And this civilizational continuity and depth, without that, you are like a silly ass in the street. And that is very precious aspect of our life, which we haven't learned to respect. Like even our museums, I mean, they are so badly yeah. kept. Now, Raj Lalwani also asks, India today of the 80s has often been spoken of as the golden age of magazine photojournalism. Aside from the stellar team of photographers who you led, what were the factors that contributed to this? What would it take for any publication to bring that back in today's political and news environment? Ye Raghu is a very relevant question because the kind of photojournalism we used to see in those days, I mean, why did I come to you when I was 17, 18 years old? Because I saw your work. Mm. I saw the way you showed India, which nobody was showing before. So I came there saying, Raghu, I want to become a photographer. Now, abhi dekho, there's actually very little photojournalism. Yeah. No, there are several reasons for this. First of all, let, let's begin with my early days with Indira Gandhi. In, in those years, in late 60s and 70s, Indira Gandhi was the strongest leader. She was the Congress president and she will be there on so many functions, social, political, cultural. And each day we had to photograph Indira Gandhi, Indira Gandhi, Indira Gandhi. Even on Doordarshan, it used to be Indira Gandhi, Indira Gandhi, and opposition used to make a protest of this. Now, early in my life, I realized, buddy, you are photographing Indira Gandhi every day because you've got no other choice. Hmm? Now, if some foreigner comes or some village person comes and he looks at these photographs of this woman and they don't know who she is, does your picture have any meaning, any expression, any energy, any magic to share with the, the space where you photographed? If they, the, your image can speak for itself, regardless of who the people are, then it's a successful attempt in journalism also, in creativity also. And that's what I practiced from the very beginning. And that's why some, most of my work on political situations has that human concern and human touch, that it retains its current, its expression, its meaning till today. So his question was that why is it missing today? Because two things. Somebody who coined this word infotainment <laughs> should be shot dead. Now, everything is, has to it's be... It's become journotainment. <laughs> uh, so this sick expression has taken over. And also the problem is that uh, electronic media is the immediacy of it is there that the journalists, the writers, the editors, they are scared, they want to compete with it, it on such a frivolous, superficial level that they've diluted the intensity of research and explorations to come out with something unique and meaningful. And, and, and you see, the problem is that more money is to be made, more spots have to be filled. Hmm. Look That's at, it. Look now at I love this question. The first three pages are all ads. It has lost Even its the front face. page. And lost its Even face. Even make the uh, yeah, masthead into an ad. Achha, now this question I love. Raghu Rai's image of the Bo Bokal, Bhopal gas tragedy. Buran Ob Oz Bilici's photo of the killing of the Russian ambassador. Arko Datta's image of Kutubuddin seeking mercy in Gujarat. As a photographer and photo editor, did you ever consider what makes certain images iconic? What separates those that are powerful until the next news cycle and those that we remember several years later? Have you been able to identify that power at the time of shooting or publishing? Or does a photo tend to take a life of its own after it is in the hands of the reader or the computer <laughs> yeah. screen? I think that afterlife 
matters. As I said, you know, that if people didn't know, if this lady in this photograph is Indira Gandhi, and the afterlife, you know, it lives for itself, is what matters. And, but then, the photograph of Bhopal child, the photograph of uh, that Syrian, you know, the baby, baby huh? these are the images which have a kind of minimum uh, of uh, noise and yet it the the point it focuses on tenderness and heart rendering feeling of a baby babies are something which touch the heart of anybody and everybody and when you see a child in that situation that he's being buried and his innocent eyes are open and they say nothing at all now it's a very sad a baby lying like this why why? I remember, you know... Your uh, son asked. Yeah. Uh, when I, I came back with some pictures of uh, refugees from Bangladesh and there was a child crying, his eyes filled with the tears and not dropping. And my son, three years old son, looks at it and he says, Papa, why is he crying? And generations will question you. So, you know, these are the moments which are so potent and powerful and they acquire their own life with the time. We have a question from one of our interns here. Hmm. Do you see any similarities between Indira Gandhi's authoritarianism and Modi's in their abuse of power? Well, he's saying abuse of power, considering both enjoyed massive popularity. I see a lot of similarity in terms of execution of things and how they pressurize certain system to make a difference. Now, that can also be authoritarianism or can be toughness of the situation and sometimes being in power to make a difference, you go overboard and sometimes out of your personal ego also, that comes in and then you become a bit ruthless, you know. So it all plays up, you know, in human psyche, you know, finally you can't control beyond a point. Because then you have to be a visionary, a statesman, a most, you know, experienced person who can make a difference to any level of society. You know. Smriti Arora is asking, in your experience as a photographer, how has the exhibition space evolved over decades in India? It has evolved to a great extent and so many galleries are showing only photography also and even the big galleries and museum have started giving space to photography but then it has become free for all and there is no uh, standardization kahin, ya ye kahin, that anything and everything is being shown so it becomes frivolous also hmm. uh, Anish is asking in this age of social media photography have we lost touch with the subject sacrificing it for superficial beauty that you have discussed actually no actually you know what is happening in digital technology is very simple you know when we started taking pictures you know whether it was color film or black and white you had to set your exposure your aperture your shutter speed every time you took a picture today digital technology has made it so simple and so good and so easy you put your camera on auto focus auto exposure auto color balance a flawlessly well exposed colorful picture appears so you've embraced you've embraced the digital uh, technology yes yes i did the day That's one wonderful. i picked up a digital camera i thought it was so wonderful that i couldn't go back to using film so you're not a dinosaur no you see but this is an aspect which gives anybody you know, anybody and everybody feels that yes, well exposed, nice colourful picture of the situation. So it's the democratisation of photography? Yeah, that has happened, but baat wohi hai. Dekho, Bheem Singh Ji, Bismillah Khan Sahib, Ravi Shankar, Vilayat Khan Sahib, Ali Akbar All Khan Sahib, and today Kishori Amunkar is gone. Hmm. Unke bachchon ke paas, ya humare bachchon ke paas, wo bhakti, wo meditative quality, who patients have fast food generations, quick food, grab a bite and grab this, grab that and off you go. That's the uh, ca characteristic of today's generation. Achha, ye batai, you are the father of a millennial children. Hmm. What do you think of the millennial generation? 
So some of them, few of them are very That's special. That's what I'm saying. Very That's special. Right. Some of them, but bulk so we of can't the, generalize. We no, can't we generalize. Can't. But, but bulk of them are driven by this fast food attitude. And, and a pursuit of, somehow there's a, I find that the respect for cheap fame is what irks me. Also. There's no, not a respect see, for, of great work or great quality, but respect for cheap yeah. fame. Anyone who's famous, yeah. I saw an actor who'd been accused of raping his maid uh, in a mall and people were posing with him. <laughs> I mean, what sense does that make? No, that, that has changed a lot, you know, that it's not the same anymore, you know. And because fast food attitude is such a wrong attitude, yet yeah, cooking used to be... A joy. A joy. You buy vegetables and all the masalas and ingredients and do it on slow fire, slow cooking, delicious food. Rohit Chopra is asking, would consumption of news moving firmly in the direction of video, what role will photojournalism play in the future of journalism? You see, so many editors who've been running magazine or newspaper feel that uh, electronic media has taken away their space. Hmm? And now there are two points. One point is that electronic media, bulk of the channels, their coverage is so mediocre, the camera, use of camera and their camera work, nobody pays any attention. And even their sets in their offices are so melodramatic, exaggerated nonsense. So all that is happening and is being accepted by the new generation because they haven't seen anything better. So that's the way this chaos, or at the best we copy, BBC, CNN, their well, style. Sub-copy, even kapde uh, bhi, kapde they're dressed bhi. like girls and, in clothes and, and, and then, nobody wears and in then, real life. And then chuti making chuti faces. Chuti skirts or jacket pen ke. Uh, and like then Stuart, making faces awful. and doing all that jatka, uh. all, everything is a copy and they should be ashamed of it. Uh, Subhendu Sarkar asks, what difference do you see in journalism during the emergency days and today when many media houses are eager to propagate rather than criticize the government. No, but even during the emergency, nobody could criticize. Nobody criticize. was criticizing them. They were propagating except for one or two <laughs> who were closed down. <laughs> no, also... People think, actually, the biggest misconception I find of this generation is that the lines were drawn so clearly during the emergency that it was like a freedom movement. Yeah. And people were... It wasn't. It was exactly the way it is today. There were few sporadic incidents that they were listening to them and they would say, Why did they arrest you? Why did they run away? Why did they write it? That was the attitude. <laughs> also, also. Also. But, but very few people wanted to make a difference. Very that few. True. That is what people forget. They think that yeah. the atmosphere was pretty much on the streets like it is today. Yeah, Am I yeah, right or wrong? Yeah, this absolutely. I find difficult to communicate to yeah. people. They the think the emergency ke din was like, you know, we were all fighting yeah. for the freedom movement. It the wasn't only happening. difference is there are more TV channels, there are, this is this Facebook and elect, uh, all this Despite internet. Despite that, Raghu, a lot of news gets hidden. A lot of news does not gets get hidden. addressed. But also, you know, one thing which is very interesting that is happening, youth picks up, some of the young people pick up political details and make such jokes out of it with such that great, great humor. Fun. Yeah, and but anonymously, anonymously. <laughs> Eventually, this is going to if carry some effect on the minds of the people, you know. Okay, you have also photographed Rahul Gandhi. Uh, what do bit. you think? Huh, but what do you think of him as a subject for uh, photographs? No, he doesn't, you know, he is not the kind, really, for me, like Indira Gandhi was, and like even Modi is. But uh, Rahul Gandhi? Rahul Gandhi, I haven't photographed him much. Priyanka has more expression for me. Yeah. Then Rahul. Then Rahul. No, you see, for me, you know, body language and expression matters a lot. Mm -hmm. But when your style of speaking or acting repeats itself, then it becomes boring for me. And you photographed, there's one whole book on people, mm. which is portraits of a lot of artists, musicians, and I remember one time, I don't know if you remember this, you were sent off to photograph uh, Yamini Krishnamurti while she was dancing and she threw a lot of tantrums with you. Not she. Huh. 
her father. Her father, okay. <laughs> so, and you came back really angry and frustrated. Ke, picture nahi lene de rahe the. Ye hua, wo hua. So, tell me about your this diva, diva uh, experiences because I know Kishori Amonkar was also very particular about dist being disturbed. Hmm. Nahi nahi Kishori Amonkar ki baat karte hain because uh, I mean Yamini Krishna Murthy. She was in 60s and 70s and maybe 80s, but Kishori ji passed away today. I'll tell you a very interesting story. First time when I went to hear her at uh, Taj Hotel, you know, uh, if you remember Rajji, used yes, to, yes, yeah, yes. Rajji he used to live in golf links. Golf links. He would organize these yes. concerts with Malik Arjun Mansoor, Kumar ji, with Kishori. So he said, uh, Raghu, you are fond of Kishori ji's music, so she's singing. Tonight. So we went there, we are sitting in the front row, she's sitting on the stage eight, ten feet away and we are sitting on the floor with gaddas and gothakiyas and everything and ashtray and there was an old man sitting next to me and after a while he must have felt a bit tired so he pulled a gothakiya oh. and he reclined and she says while singing sit straight. So we were all taken aback. So after a few minutes, the raga was over and she said she'll take 15 minutes break. But we, I was so shaken with that. So in those years, I used to smoke. And there were ashtrays there. So she said she'll be back in 15 minutes. So I lighted a cigarette because I was really shocked. Okay, how can she do this? Mm -hmm. So after six, seven minutes, she turns up and I'm smoking. She says, don't smoke. I said, sorry. Aap tashreef farma nahi thi. Is liye mene ye himmat ki. To mene bujha di. To after the concert was over, Rajji told her that, you know, the guy sitting in front of you, you told him, don't smoke. He is so fond of your music and he wanted to come here specially for you. So she says, please call him. I must apologize. To mein milne gya. I said, Namaskar Kishori Ji, Kisi Raghu Bhai, maaf kariye ga. When I sing, you know, I'm so touchy and sensitive that she anything, anything moves, it hurts me. It upsets me. So that's why I said this. I said, Kishori Ji, maaf kariye ga. Aapki baat bataun, kiti bataiye. I said, the previous concert where I had gone to listen to you, I was far away. And you said something beautiful. You said, for you, when you sing, your audience is your Bhagwan. And I thought that was a beautiful expression, that you're singing to your gods. I said, similarly, Kishori ji, when I come to listen to great musicians like you, I think you're going to be my Bhagwan. You're going to connect me to him. So I come with that hope. Now, what has happened? You were angry with your Bhagwan. My Bhagwan was angry with me. So where do we land? <laughs> what did she say? Na Raghubai, Na Raghubai. And, and of course, you know, but, but, Kishori ji. Kishori ji was the last of the vocalists, of the females of those generations who sang with a feminine voice, feminine tenderness and sensitivity. Otherwise, aap baki us zamane ki kitni mardun jaisi awaz hai. Second thing. Delicate, she was delicate. Ah, absolutely. Secondly, the greatest tribute I like to pay is that when she was connected and she sang, it was like showering of his blessings through her music. She was a ladder to spirituality, to God, when she sang with, this, with the full concentration. Nobody sang like her. Uh, there was one concert uh, that I was attending and I was in the front row and suddenly she stopped and she told off a lady who we all know that lady was standing way at the back and she was drinking a glass of water <laughs> and she stopped and kicked her out she's a industrial rich industrialist wife she says mere samne pee rahe ho nikal jao yahan se and the poor woman went trembling out <laughs> but it comes to mind which I asked you something I think 30 years ago, when you were throwing a tantrum in the India Today office with Arun about some pictures and the size of it and how many pages you wanted. And I asked you, I said, Raghu, you're a genius. You're so talented. Then why do you have to be a diva? And you said to me, 
एक के साथ दूसरा भी आता है सो वी हैव टू एक्सेप्ट दैट फ्रॉम किशोरी अमोनकर जी दैट एक के साथ दूसरा भी आता है सो शी वॉज डू यू बाई एनी चांस हैव और डज एनी डू एनी ऑफ आर व्यूअर्स हैव अ रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ किशोरी किशोरी अमोनकर वंदे मातरम बिकॉज आई यूज टू हैव इट ऑन अ टेप ऑन अ ऑन अ टेप का सेट and i can't find it digitally so if anybody has it please post it because it is the best vande mataram i have ever heard yeah ragu thank you very very much it was wonderful and thank you to our viewers and listeners if you like that click here to support us and down here to subscribe to our youtube channel and do check out the other stuff we do like news laundry interviews why so serious animations comics panel discussions podcasts which are really big and much much more